Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu My dear students, today uh, we'll be discussing or we'll be our focus will be on lesson number three which is in your if you take your GCO level paper you should do it describing a picture so what do you know about uh, picture description so far when you speak about a picture or when you want to describe a picture we essentially want to look at three things or we essentially discuss three different sectors in this case but before we go on to that uh, let us uh, look at this picture for example now you can see uh, this is a particular picture in which uh, a classroom is depicted right so there are students in this classroom and uh, you can see that they are doing their work and what else is happening here there's a teacher standing somewhere and then you have some students and here you can see there are two students who are wearing something like in blue color you can see there is a student wearing a blue color cardigan another one wearing a blue color t-shirt and then see you can see on the table there is some students who are having uh, some textbooks on them or books you can see and you can see there is a water bottle on the table so similarly whatever the picture that is given to you you should be able to describe it so essentially when you want to describe the picture there are three things that we consider the first one is the situation so in this case you can see the situation is nothing but it is a classroom so you can say this is a picture of a classroom right this is a picture of a classroom make sure there is no spelling mistakes and stuff like that so you started the way that is this is a picture of a classroom now when you want to go further you can see that there are some students right so you can see the actions that is happening here there are several actions that happens here right the first action you can see the teacher he is addressing the class or you can say he is teaching in the class or you can say he is standing in front of the class these are all different types of actions right so you can see essentially there is a teacher or there is a sir or you can put a name for him if a name is given you can say Mr. John is standing in front of the glass or something similar to that so how can you write that just go ahead and start writing that action as well now as I said this is an action so I'm going to put it in bold right let's start with the actions that's happening here the first action is the the teacher I'll put it as a teacher is addressing the classroom or you can say addressing the class because essentially this is what it is now we don't usually say something which is different we don't say like the teacher is addressing the classroom but rather in this case when we say class we denote the group of people who are actually in it so we can say the teacher is addressing the class now as you are describing this particular picture we use present simple things that is why we say the teacher is addressing the class right and what else can you say about this picture what are the other actions that you can see you can see a few students or you can see the students sitting in the front row or the students at the front you can say that as well are writing so let's write that as well the students what are they doing they are sitting right 
sitting in the front row are writing I'm going to modify it a little bit so rather than saying writing I can say a uh, taking down notes right now the students sitting in the front row are taking down notes you can see there are three students doing that right what else is happening here you can see a student at the back what is he wearing? He is wearing a cardigan. Is it a cardigan actually? No, it is a hoodie, right? You can see the student wearing a blue colored hoodie. What is he doing? He is looking at the teacher. You can see the interaction is he is looking at the teacher. So I am going to do that as well. So you can see the student, where is he? He is at the front or he is at the back? He is at the back, right? The student at the back. What is he wearing? Wearing something in blue. So you can say, who is wearing a blue hoodie? That is the sort of the dress that he is wearing. What is he doing? He is looking at the teacher now essentially what we have done is we have combined three sentences here if you want to break this up you can say a student is at the back or you can say a student is sitting at the back the first sentence or you can say a student is wearing a blue hoodie right and you can say the student is looking at the teacher these three are essentially three different sentences but what we have done so far is we have made it into one so what we do is in this case we are describing this particular student and his action first we say where he is in position you can say that he is at the back of the class or is sitting at the back row or sitting at the right whatever that is given there and what is he wearing he is wearing a blue hoodie when you see the student at the back you can see there are several students who are sitting at the back in this picture you can see there are two students who are sitting at the back so when you want to describe one particular student you can't say the student sitting at the back why because there is more than one and that is not a unique situation so what we do in this case is we simply add one more detail you can say what he is wearing in this case in this case you can see that he is wearing something in blue but the other person is also wearing something in blue but the difference is the person who we are not focused on this particular person he is wearing a blue t-shirt but the person that we want to describe or the person in whom we are interested in he is wearing a blue hoodie so that's what we have used this particular face here wearing a blue hoodie and what is he doing he is looking at the teacher right now that's enough of actions let us look at the background what is happening in the background <coughs> If you look at this picture carefully you can see there are several objects lying around right so if you look at this picture you can see there is a particular water bottle which is on the table and then you can see there are some pencil cases on the table isn't it and uh, what else can you see you can see there is a brown cupboard just standing to the right of the teacher you can see that as well here right and uh, what else can you see you can see there are two rows of boys sitting on the right of the teacher so these are different background reading materials so when you want to read a picture remember we do not only focus on the picture and the situation or in this case we don't only focus on what is happening in the foreground 
we also want to focus on whatever that is happening in the background as well because every little detail counts so when you want to go a bit further you can say whatever the things that's happening in the background can be taken into consideration as well so the third criteria or the third point that we are going to look at right now is the background so let's go on with the background and when you want to describe uh, the, the objects that is uh, at the front or at the back whatever please include that in the background so in that case in that way you will have a similar focus on all the objects as well let's start with the objects you can say there is a water bottle on the front table right or you can say on the table at the front both of them have similar meaning but this looks quite a bit uh, better than the previous one you can see there is a water bottle on the table at the front and you can see a brown cupboard you can say can be seen right you can see a uh, can be seen to the right of the teacher you can see a brown cover is on the right of the teacher as well <coughs> and if you look at the front uh, row carefully you can see <coughs> there are several books right so you can write that as well <coughs> some books lay on the front table so these are different ways as how you can describe this particular picture now let us go through the work that we have done so far now we are focusing on the lesson third lesson of this year level paper which is picture description uh, you can go to uh, Winhart's Academy's uh, web page and you can find this particular description there as well and we are focusing on how to read a picture you can see that we focus on three different things the situation and we have the actions here and we also have background so the situation essentially is the incident or the scenario or whatever that is given when you start or when you want to read the overall picture in this case this picture is of a classroom or you can say lecture hall if you want to or you can say a school but rather don't want to say as it's a school because it's essentially a part of a school that you can see here right so you can say tutor if you want to but uh, we are taking a more generalized and a simple approach here so we say this is a classroom and we describe different sort of actions here the teacher is addressing the class you can see that the teacher is in this case addressing the class the students sitting in the front row are taking down notes you can see that as well right there are several students who are sitting at the front row and what are they doing they are taking down notes from the teacher right and uh, the student at the back who is wearing a blue hoodie is looking at the teacher the student who is at the back uh, and he has a blue hoodie you can see that here and what is he doing he is looking at the teacher now you can describe something more here right you can see there is a boy who is wearing or you can say a boy wearing a green t-shirt is sitting in between two girls you can see that right because if you want to describe the placement of a particular uh, boy you can use proportion in this case now you might have studied that when you when it comes to prepositions you can uh, divide them into three as phrases of time phrases of movement and the easiest one which is phrases of place so if you want to describe the position of something where it is or where the position of a place is you can say you can use these type of prepositions 
as we have used here we have used the table on the table you can see a water bottle so we say a water bottle is on the table so the word on is a preposition or a phrase of place in this case if you want to see a boy is sitting in between two girls or between the two girls so when you want to use the word or when you use the word between that is also a preposition you can look at that as well the teacher is in front of the class but essentially we don't say in front of the class we say with the action what is he doing you can see the teacher is standing in front of the class so as you are describing the action what is he doing which is standing right so usually it comes under phase of movement in this case because we are describing a movement right now without further ado let's go to some uh, let's go to the next part which is the background as we have done in background i told you that we usually take into consideration various types of uh, objects and we describe them and we also describe very we give the small details much more value right so whatever the picture that comes across to you you should be able to describe it using these three key steps the first being the situation and then the actions and then the background now as you are students of vc ordinary level it is essential that you go through the o level paper and then find out what is asked from you in various years now as it is 2016 that will be our first priority focus we will go through that first now if you look at 2016 this is the paper that is given to you and uh, you have a picture and they have instructed you to use only one word use one word only so remember when you want to describe a picture in this case they have specifically asked you or the examiners want you to write only one word in that blank and the word should also be something that you already know nothing fancy in this case right let us start the first one being ravi and his family are moving to a new house you can see that right and what has arrived here you can say the dash has just arrived so in this case you can see there is a lorry here and it has just arrived in the scene so you can say the lorry has just arrived with the furniture you can see uh, there is a particular vehicle here with the title as movers you can use several words you may say the vehicle v e h i c l e vehicle could be one word or you can say the lorry in this case essentially in sri lanka when you want to move something around you should use a lorry if it is a big stuff so you can use any of those two words and this picture shows what everyone is doing isn't it so you can see in this picture what everyone is doing so we can use the word picture here ravi is carrying a flower what is it if you look at the boy who is very close to this particular vehicle you can see he is carrying something right and they have said this is a flower something so in case of a compound noun you can say a flower vase a flower bouquet but in this case he is actually carrying a flower pot p o t and his mother is what is she doing she has a broom on her hand she is essentially sweeping the floor right when we want to clean something using a broom we usually use the word sweep so as it is in continuous format and as you are describing what you see right now you will see she is sweeping the floor there are you can see 1 2 3 4 5 you may count like that or you can simply say there are some men helping with the furniture or if you want to can you can say 1 2 3 4 5 there are five men who are helping with the furniture right what about this guy he is he helping no he is just looking at them and he is giving instructions 
right what are they doing first they are carrying a table a chair and a what is the third set of people carrying carrying a bed good carrying a bed into the house so in this case as you can see the second action speaks about the or the second sentence speaks about the actions of these people it's better to use the word a number in this case for example there is a pair here which is one two they are carrying a table and there is a man carrying a chair and there are two men or two helpers who are helping with a bed so you can see one two three four five so it's better if you write five or you may either write some in that blank Ravi's father is what is he doing this is Ravi's father now he is not helping with the furniture in this case what is he doing you can look at uh, or you can use different words here you can say Ravi's father is looking at you may say that he is just looking at the man or you can say monitoring the man or you can say supervising the man right so these are different words that you may use depending on what you have to do here but whatever the words that you use you may get marks for that because it looks like all three of them are correct now there is another man with a uh, something in his hand what does he have you can see Ravi's mother she is sweeping the floor and there is another man with a similar structure or similar equipment or similar instrument in his hands so you can see this man is having a broom b r o o m or you can say broom stick if you want to broom which is essentially enough you can say there is another man with a broom in his hands he is cleaning the what is he cleaning right he is cleaning the wall right he is not cleaning the windows in this case so if you write windows in this case because you can't see whether he is cleaning the windows or not you can only see that he is brushing off or dusting off the walls so you can see he is cleaning the wall with it there is a large tree in the where you can see there is a tree you can say there is a large tree in the compound ok because they want to use one word it's better that you use the word compound c o m p o u n d rather than saying ground or near house or something which is not quite right better use the word compound now in 2016 what happened the words were not given to you right you have to find the words and write them the similar structure came in 2017 should be 2017 my dear children you are given a particular picture of a room and uh, look, looking at this room and observing the room carefully you have to use only one word and fill in the blanks right let's do that they say this is Kamal's room right now we are going to describe the room of a particular person by the name of Kamal but can you see Kamal in this room no why he has gone out and the door is shut you can see the door is closed so there are three different words that you may use here you can say the door is shut s h u t which is one or you can say the door is locked a low c k e d or you can say the door is closed c l o s c d whatever the synonym which is most appropriate for close can be used here now you have to write c l o s e d closed because we are speaking in a passive voice in this case his bed is near the what is it near the you don't know what it is near you can say the wall or the shirt or something but they have given you a clue near the something and there is a curtain partly covering it right now can you see a curtain near the shirt no you can't see that can you see a curtain near the wall no where can you see a curtain you can see a curtain on the windows right so you can see there is a curtain partly covering it so obviously it should be a window so you can say his bed is near the windows w i n d o w s windows 
and there is a curtain partly covering it. Now there is a something of Sri Lanka. So in, in this particular picture, what can you see that looks like Sri Lanka? Right, you can see there is a portrait here, right? You can see there is a picture or you can see a portrait or a wall clipping, whatever that looks like Sri Lanka. So you can say there is a portrait, portrait of Sri Lanka hanging on the wall, W-A-A-A. So when you want, you can write portrait or you can write picture or a photo, but it's much better if you write portrait because that's how we call a framed picture. A portrait is essentially a picture which is framed and then hanged, which is used for hanging usually, that's what we say. But nowadays in mobile phones also you can see portrait mode and landscape mode, right? So when you say portrait, it's more vertical, where the width is more narrower and the height is a little bit more than the width in this case. And when you say landscape, it's actually a rotated version of a portrait. You, you, as you use mobile phones, you might know these two modes as well. His bed is very narrow, one with a dash on one side. You can see this bed is very narrow, right? Because you can see only one person can sleep on it. On the bed, what can you find on one side? You can find a pillow, right? This looks like a pillow. So you can write with a pillow, P-I-L-L-O-W on one side. Next, two something and a pair of something are hung on the wall hanger. Now if you look at this wall hanger, you can see there are two something and there is a pair of something. We know that as you can look at this particular uh, picture, you will see that there are two shirts. You can clearly see the uh, shirts because usually in t-shirts, you cannot find something which is given in shirts, which is buttons, right? In t-shirts, you cannot find so many buttons. You can see in this picture, both of these particular clothing have pieces which are buttons. So you can see there are two shirts and a pair of trousers. So remember children, when you are writing these words, do not make any spelling mistakes or spelling errors because you might not get marks for that. He has a big dash to sit on when he is studying. Now you can see in this picture which is very prominent is this particular disc and there is a chair in this case here, right? And comparative or compared to any other thing here, this chair looks a bit out of uh, place or it looks a bit bigger than the others. So this is used to sit on when you want to study or when Kamal wants to study. So they say that he has a big chair, C-H-A-I-R, or you can say he has a big armchair, depending on your preference, to sit on when he is studying. So if you think, or if you think that this looks like an armchair, go ahead and write it, it doesn't matter, or just a simple word of chair is enough. On his dash are several books. Now you can see some books only on this table, right? So you may say on his table are several books. Or you can say on his study, S-T-U-D-Y, are several books. It's better that if you want to use table, it's fine with you. His mother has placed a dash of water. So you can see in this on this table, there are different stuff that you can find here. You can see some books, then you, have, you can see an ink bottle and there is a particular lamp and there is also a bottle in this case. The container that you can use to carry some water or pour some water or store some water in this case is this bottle, right? So you can say his mother has placed a bottle of water on it for him to drink when he is thirsty. His room is neat and clean, right? So this is how the description for 2017 paper had gone so far. In both of these cases, my dear children, in 17 and 16, 
you had to come up with your own words so there was a possibility of writing several versions for the same picture now we saw that you can say that this is a chair or an armchair right you can say that you can say the door is shut locked closed somewhere something which is similar to that can also be written right so there are different versions or different uh, descriptions that can be provided for the same picture so to reduce the confusion and make it more uniform starting from 2018 as you can see here the words are given to you the only thing that you have to do is select the most suitable word and just copy that and paste it to that particular blank in this case definitely if the word that you copy has a spelling error you will not get marks for that particular word let's start now you can see this is a marker right because it looks very clearly and you can see this to be a marker this picture shows a market place people seem to be busy what are they doing buying various things now you can see so there is a queue assembled here right this queue is assembled here you can see some buyers because th these are the people who want to buy things right if you want to buy something you will be buyers if you want to sell something you will be sellers so you can see some buyers are waiting in a queue before a stall so when you want to go to a sunday fair or a marketplace there are very small shops on the pavement and stuff there yeah? they sell different type of things especially vegetables and fish and these type of things right so these small shops which are mostly temporary are known as stalls right we are a uh, what is you can see behind the stall there is a person wearing a cap right so if these people are buyers these will be sellers but do you have a particular word in this case with the word sellers no but you have salesman right so you can say salesman with a cap is selling goods there is a you can see somebody or there is something with a walking stick in the middle of the picture so you can say there is a lady in this case or a woman but the word lady is the word that is given here so we use a lady with a cap is selling goods there is a you have used this there is a lady with a walking stick in the middle of the picture a man carrying two bags is what is he doing he is going away right if he is going away we use the word leaving l e a v i n g a man carrying two bags is leaving the place how does it look the bag is full right you can say the bag look full is it correct no the bags look full may be correct let us see but if something is full and it is very heavy you will use the word heavy in this case because the word that is given to you is not full but heavy right the area around the counter is what now you can see there is a counter somewhere and this area is fully crowded because there are a lot of people in this area right so you can say the area around the counter is crowded the word is given to you there as well two something can also be seen in this picture what can what are the two objects that you can see here right can you see two stalls here no there are, there are more than two stalls here but you can see there is some sort of a stick there are two sticks on the far left and far right we call this as lamp posts because these are essentially posts and there is a lamp there electric lamp post so that word is given here which is lamp post so you may use that word two lamp posts can be seen in the picture there is a something between the lamp post now what is between the lamp post right now this picture has a stall at the front there is a vendor who is at the back also you can see that vendor here as well and between these two things you can see a large sort of a tent sort of a structure right 
So we will use that word which is tent T-E-N-T -E because that is what it is It is not a stall A That is a tent between the lamp post A something or someone standing near one lamp post Seem to be talking to someone Now you can see Near the lamp post you can see a man here right a man who is wearing something in white because as a, essentially a black and white photo you can't see which color it is but you can see there is somebody talking to somebody else so in this case you will use the word man because a lady is already used before so you can say a man right man standing near one lamppost seems to be talking to someone this is one of the what sort of a day is it one of the busiest day one of the busiest days and the marketplace now how will you identify why do you say busiest because now in, when you want to speak about adjectives my dear children we have our normal adjective something like big then we have a comparative phase of a particular adjective which is bigger or bigger than you can see for example you can see uh, you can say a cow is a big animal i'm just giving you very simple examples but you can see an elephant is bigger than the cow when you want to compare two things we use a comparative adjective but if you want to see what is the biggest animal or what is the biggest mammal on the planet you can say the blue whale is the biggest when you want to speak about a superlative adjective such as biggest largest smallest most beautiful something like that we usually use the article which is the so in this case we say that this is very 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 busy so which is maximum busy right so in this case we say this is one of the busiest days of the marketplace now my dear children i think and i hope that you will be uh, you have got an idea as to how to do 2018 paper 16 and 17 i'll display 2019 paper now which is given to you here you can see there is a particular room in this case let's go through that as well which is our last activity for today right let's start this picture shows Chatura's room, isn't it? Now there is a person by the name of Chatura here But I don't know whether he is here or not, let's see But there are two boys you can see in this room, right? Right, let's start This picture shows Chatura's room His something Now look, there is a change in what we did previously In the previous years, we did not use the letter Isn't it? In 2016, you may remember we use the word you have to think of a word and write that in 2017 also you might have to or you had to think of a word and write that word in 2018 the words are given with no particular order or numbers you write that word for example busiest was one of the word lady was another word lamp posts were another word right so in this case in 2019 is much easier rather than writing the word you have to write a particular letter which correspond to that for example if the answer is bed you write a if it is curtains you write b if it is umbrella you write d if it is friend you write e if it is books you write i so similar to that let us start with the first example and finish it off. The picture shows Chatura's room. You can see the Chatura is in the room. His E. So what is E in this case? It is friend, right? His friend Isuru is sitting near him. Can you see him? Yes, he is sitting near him. His friend Isuru is sitting near him on his bed. You can see this is a bed, right? Even without the word, you can see this is a bed. But do not write the word bed here. You can simply write the letter which is A. So you can write near him and you can write instead of bed you can write A. There is a 
dash with three dash in the room there is a blank there's something here that has three things right but what are the things that you can see here right you can see there is a table that has three drawers there is a table that has three books there is a cupboard that has three trousers so what is the word that you can use here think of that and I want you to complete this activity and uh, send it back to me if you have time or finally when you go on you will be able to figure out what word is needed here right so be careful do not write at once the answer that you think of because when you want to speak in three or triplet you can see there are three clothes in the cupboard there are three drawers in the table and there are three books on the table as well so, so far my dear children, what you have understood in this case is how to describe a picture. So, picture description had been one of our main focus in this case. If you want to learn more, you may visit my website in this case my dear children, which is winhards, you can go for sites.google.com, you can see here, sites.google.com, we've Winhards Academy. And then whatever the test that you want to study for, it is given here in content, right? If you want to describe the picture, you may click picture description and go straight to that uh, particular activity and see that. Or you may simply scroll down to whatever the activity that you want and see whatever that you want to see. Now these contents are completely free for you to watch. You can watch anytime. And you can simply go on to this website and see what is given. This is one way of looking at the things. Or in YouTube, what you can do is, you can go to YouTube. And then you may type our academy, which is Winhas Academy in this case. And that way also, you can write, you can say Winhas. You can go for Winhas Academy and here you can find the word that is whatever the answer that you want to find here. The videos are given to you so you can look at these videos. Whatever the overall structure that you want to look is given in a very simplistic and easier manner. For example, the test number that we are doing today is test number 3, right? How to describe the picture that is given to you here separately as to how to describe a picture you may want to look at that in the way that you want you can look at it in a very simplistic way how to describe a picture is given here so my dear children if you want to go through the work and finally understand what is uh, going through here uh, you may do that and please remember to like our video and subscribe the video as well so in that case it will be easier for you. I hope to see you again tomorrow in another lesson. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.